Well, I've certainly done a lot of things to make Vladimir Putin angry. Um, uh, most importantly, um, getting the Magnitsky Act passed in the United States, which um, freezes the assets of of Putin regime officials. And since they value money more than just about anything, yes, um, they're pretty mad. Let's get into the changes that are taking place there in Russia because uh, Putin has announced this shake-up with sort of removal of uh, the Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev that many have become accustomed to. And many are wondering if this is about Putin's attempts to shore up his support beyond 2024, some power structure where he's still in charge even if he's not the <coughs> president. So, so um, uh, the first thing that everyone should know is that there's no democracy in Russia whatsoever. It's all it's a facade. It's a Potemkin village. There is no no democracy there. And so they, they, they have to go through these pretend exercises. And so the, in the, the Constitution says that Putin has to leave in 2024, but um, Putin is never going to leave power because if he does, he would lose the money that he's stolen and he would probably get put in jail or possibly worse. And so he's got to find a way to stay in power. Which are your words around the funds, and we don't have evidence about the removal of funds from the state at this point from Putin, but I want to talk about the, the comments from Putin about a Soviet-era practice of having leaders for life who die in office. He doesn't favour that concept. So why does he want to entrench power if that's what's happening here? Well, for, first of all, you, you can't believe a word that he says. He said they didn't shoot down MH17. They did. He says we didn't cheat in the Olympics. They did. They said we did. Uh, everything he says um, has to be discounted. So, so, so why is he saying that? Do you think it would not go down well with voters and those at home if he's trying to entrench power? Do you think this would activate some of those protests even more? Well, pe people in Russia want to believe that they're, they're a European country that has a democracy and, and, and they, they, they cheat and pretend and, and and go through the motions of a democracy. But, but when it comes to real democracy, um, Vladimir Putin has no intention of giving up power. And so it's all a little tinker, tinkering with, with the rules and, and trying to um, make it look like it's a democracy, but at the same time um, having the absolute power so that he can keep keep his position and be safe. We've been debating uh, whether it's a, a negative concept having Putin for longer, that, you know, they're saying better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Is it a good thing if Putin is behind the scenes and there is stability across Russia versus failed regimes where there have been autocrats, very strong men in politics, and they have been removed, and you've seen chaos in some of those countries, and this is a country with significant firepower at its disposal. Is it a good thing to have stability, whether that's through Putin or someone else? Uh, Putin is an absolute cancer on Russia. He's, he's a terrible thing for the country. He's um, uh, completely and absolutely um, stripped the country of its natural resources for the benefit of a very small number of people. Um, he's stripped people of, of any freedom. He's stripped people of any, of any ability to, to have any control over their lives. He's, he's a terrible menace for the people of Russia. And uh, it, would, it would be an absolute godsend to get rid of the Putin, Putin and his regime and bring back a normal democracy to the country. Let's uh, switch focus to the United States because it is an election year and President Trump's messaging around Russia has been somewhat confusing. There's been somewhat an, an air of um, closer ties at times and then there's been distancing from the Russians. How do you think he will approach Russia this year as he goes back to voters? Is Russia a big negative for him? Well, so it, it's a very odd situation because on one hand, the U.S. government, when I, when I say the government, not Donald Trump, but the government itself, um, is pretty robust on Russia. The, the policies of sanctions and various other things are, are uh, as one would, in my, my, my shoes, would hope them to be. On the other hand, you have these absurd statements um, from uh, President Trump saying that Putin is a good guy, Putin's not a killer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he, so for, for the most part, he hasn't been able to follow through on those statements. If he were to be able to follow through, it would be very bad for, for the world, very bad for the United States. Um, and, 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 it's, and he seems to try to be convincing um, people uh, that Russia is okay, but, but I don't think it's really working. I don't think that most people in the, in the United States or anywhere else think that, that Putin is a, a force for good. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.